Wow, what is going on guys? First, Unity made an awesome VR multiplayer template that features simple connection, network avatar, and three mini games. And now they just released a new template that this time focused not on virtual reality, but on mixed reality. Honestly, this template just blew my mind. It lets you connect multiple people around a table. It has voice chat and three mini games as well. So in this video, we are going to have a deep look inside this project to see not only what we have, but also how it is made. As always, if you enjoyed this this video, make sure to like and subscribe down below. This is also the last day where you can use the code 2025 on the yearly VR addict tier on my Patreon to get access to everything that I ever posted there and all the exclusive content that I will make in 2025. So if you want to treat yourself and support the channel, this is your last chance. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first step to open the MR multiplayer template is to go on the Unity Hub and then on the top right corner, click on New Project. Here, make sure to select a version of Unity above Unity 6.23 LTS. There you go. In my case, I'm using Unity 6.35. Now we can simply go to Samples and there you should see here the beautiful MR multiplayer tabletop template that we can select. And once we click on Download Template, as you can see, we can now give a name to the project. In my case, I'm going to simply name it MR Multiplayer. Beautiful. We can select a location, an organization, and here make sure to connect to Unity Cloud, which is important because we are going to need some multiplayer functionalities by Unity. And once everything is done, everything is now ready, we can click on Create Project and wait for Unity to do the job. Okay, so now the MR multiplayer tabletop template has just opened and as you can see, they have also made an awesome tool to help us configure our project with it. So we can simply click here on Start UGS Configuration. Beautiful, and now we have a little tutorial. We can simply click on Next and it will basically say that we need to go to the project setting over there. It will also open it for us and to make sure that we have a Unity project ID set up for this project that will use Unity Cloud for the multiplayer connection. Now, anyway, we don't have to do anything else. As you can see, it was able to connect the project and now we can click on next. Go again, it will also do the setup itself for the VVox connection. So this is just for the voice connection to be able to talk to each other. Now we can simply click on next. And here we go, as you can see, the setup is now completed. If you want, you can click on here the scene setup tutorial if you want to get more information about what's inside this Unity project. But this is something that I will go over once we've done the overview of the project. So I'm simply going to click on down. And there you go. Now at this point, we can close this window. We can see here the awesome Unity project. We can even maybe remove the readme asset because that's something we don't want to see. I also strongly encourage you to go watch the different documentation that's in the tutorials page over there. But in my case, I'm simply going to right click over there and close the tab. And now we are able to have a look at the project. Now, as you can see, if I click on play, the application is launching, but by default, it is using the XR device simulator, which is a tool uh, made by Unity to be able to replicate the movement that you are doing in VR, but not using a VR headset, using a keyboard and a mouse. So I don't want this, of course, because I want to test it with the VR headset that I have plugged in. So I'm going to leave play mode. And if you want to remove here the XR device simulator, you can go to edit project settings and down below here on XR interaction toolkit, you can disable the use XR device simulator in scene. Beautiful. Okay. So another thing that we can make sure is to go back to the XR plugin management. And as you can see for Android, we have the initialized XR on setup that is enabled, but on, not on desktop. So make sure to enable it as well. And there you go. Now our project is ready. If we wanted, we could, we could click on play. And with here, the MetaQuest link, I could directly test the application right there. But right now the path through is not working and uh, it's not displayed inside Unity. So because I really want to show you everything that is inside the application in its best shape, I think the best thing I can do is simply build the game directly. But that's something that you don't need to do. Of course, you can directly test by clicking on play. But in my case, I will simply go to file, build profile. There you go. As you can see right now, the platform used is Windows. So what we need to do is select Android and click on switch platform. Okay, here we go. Now you can see that the Android platform is now active. This means that we can simply plug a VR headset directly to our computer and click here on build and run. We can give a name like test. And then if we save, there you go, it will build our application and launch it directly to our MetaQuest headset. By the way, once the APK is built, you can also send the APK to your friend 
for them to try the application and be able to connect each other through the multiplayer. But now let me show you an overview of what you can find inside this project. Okay, here we go. The application has just opened. And as you can see, I'm inside here mixed ready. I can also see my hands. So of course, the base of this project is using here the Meta Unity setup with both hand tracking and path through. And it also adds some interaction. For example, I can poke uh, the UI that is in front of me. So this UI is actually saying us that we need to make sure that everything is clear. There you go. For the setup of the table, we'll be able to pinch here the virtual table. We can continue, we can rotate it as well. And there you go. This is the table that we will be using for our application. As you can see, we can grab it simply right there and position it where we want. I think like this, it's good. We can also grab it on the side if we only want to rotate it. Another thing that we can look is here. We have some occlusion with the ends as well, which I think is really cool. Not, of course, super precise, but I think it's already good that they put it. So, of course, this application used Unity and tracking with the different interaction they provide to interact with it. But it also works with the controller. So if I grab my controller to the side here, as you can see, I can still move everything around and everything is working fine with both end tracking and controllers. And now I can also see my avatar. And when I speak, you can see that the mouth is also moving. So this avatar system is the same as the one provided in the VR multiplayer template by Unity, not the MR multiplayer template. And on the side, I can also see some nice things where I can actually change the look of this table. I can make it MR. I can make it also completely VR so that I cannot see my surrounding. And there you go. But in my case, I will leave it to AR. And here we go. Now, from that point on, everything is done. We have the table. We can see that we have interaction for both end tracking and controllers. And what we can simply do is set a certain name for ourselves. Press on confirm. And here we can decide if we want to host a table, join a table, or enter a code to enter a private table. But of course, this is nothing new compared to the old VR template, but there are some differences which will be super interesting to talk about just in a minute. So if I select host table, there you go, I can write something for the table, there you go. I can choose if I want this table to be private or not. Private means, of course, that it won't be registered in the public list of table, but that the user will be able to join it with a code. Now, anyway, in my case, I will leave it public and press on host. And there you go. As you can see, after waiting a little bit, the table has been created. I can see the code for my table. I can see that I've joined the voice chat and I can see the different seat on my table. Beautiful. And now one thing is missing. It's for other people to join my game. And there you go. Fortunately for me, I have a friend who has decided to join. Now, as you can see, this is using the same VR connection system as before. It means that I can see here this avatar. We can talk to each other with Vivox. We can see the different ends moving. So the end tracking is also synchronized. So as you can see, this works really, really great. But now the most important thing here to notice is that when making a VR multiplayer game, well, we synchronize the position of each player based on the world center. But on this application right here, we are not using the world center, we are using the center of this table. So let me show you if I simply grab it and move it to the side. Now, as you can see, the position of the other player has changed and we can definitely see that it is anchoring each one of the player using here the center of the table that we are putting, which will make sure that everybody will be able to interact in the same way with everything that will be inside this table. Okay, so at this point, you can see that there are some settings to see uh, ourselves for the connection or even some parameters for the audio settings. We can mute ourselves, we can see the time. Uh, so lots of cool things to do. But the most important part are over there. So we can actually see our seat. We can see the seat of the other user, which we can mute or not. And we can actually switch seat if we want. So now we are on the red side. If we wanted, we could go back to the blue side over there. Yeah, and as you can see, it works for each one of the different players. But of course, it is time for the coolest part, the games which are present in this, because they did not only provide an MR template with end tracking controllers, with different view mode, with a connection based on the table. They also provided different games. So if I press here, 
you can see that we have four different games that we can play. We have uh, an empty table, which, yeah, maybe we have three games to play, not four. We have the empty table, the physics sandbox, the slingshot, and the chest. So, for example, if I press on chest, there you go. We have some floating stuff appearing. And if I press on start, all of these elements will show and we can start playing chess together. So let me just put it over there and end my turn. And now it will be my turn. And you can see that the logic of a complete chess game is synchronized. I cannot believe that uh, Unity has provided something like this. It is so insanely good. Okay, I really want to finish this game, but of course we have other games to show you, so let's press on games, and instead let me be, uh, select here the uh, physics sandbox, which is awesome as well. So the physics sandbox really shows how you can actually synchronize the grabbing and moving of different parts. So for example, I can here move some stuff, and I can see that the other player can do so as well. There you go, it looks really cool. So everything is of course synchronized, we can see that we can move each different object together and the physics is working really well as well. And this one is actually really cool to see the different things you can actually do with physics. Now anyway, time is for the last one which is the slingshot. It's very simple, we can simply start. And now there is some balloon over there that are spawning on the table and which are trying to reach here, the vortex at the top. And our goal is now to pop these balloons before they reach the top. And yes, that's basically it. As you can see, there is a lot of thing inside this template. Okay, so two thumbs up, as you can see, with this awesome template, we have a lot of thing. We have, of course, the MR setup with Unity. We have end tracking and controller setup. We have multiplayer connection. We have the synchronization, not with the world transform, but with the center of a table. We have three different view here with the VR, MR, AR. And we have three different minigames to show how we can synchronize and create our own gameplay with it. So that is a lot of things. This template really is awesome. But now let's see how it looks inside Unity. Okay, so back inside Unity. Now that we've played everything inside this template, let's see how they were able to do it. Now, of course, the two first things are here. The XR Network Game Manager and the Network Manager XR Multiplayer. So these two... As you can see, contains network object, lobby manager, authentication manager, and voice chat manager. So basically, the goal of this manager is to be able to connect multiple people together. And you have also a bunch of things on here, the network manager, which you need for the connection. Now, at this point, we can see here the player prefab that will be spawned for each player joining a lobby. So if we click on it, we can actually highlight it here on the project window. And if we double click on it, there you go, you can see how the network player avatar works. Now, in a few words, we can see that there is the XRI network player, which will synchronize and move the head, left hand, and right hand position. Down below, we have the XR hand pose replicator, which will be able to synchronize the bones for the hand tracking. But of course, this is nothing new, because this was already present inside the VR template. So now, let's go back and leave the prefab edit mode. And let's have a look at here the MR interaction setup, which is basically the player. So here the MR interaction setup is very similar to the hand tracking sample that they provided. So if actually you go to sample, XR interaction toolkit, the version that we have, and here on the end interaction demo, if we double click on it, this is here a demo which show how you can use hand tracking and controls to interact with all of these objects. And this is actually the player foundation that they've used to let our player here interact with everything inside the scene. So yeah, and you can, and if we scroll down the XR origin, XR break, you can see all of these different interactors working over there. Something a bit different is of course, the offline player avatar, which will provide an avatar for the player, even if he is not connected to the network. But now are you ready? Because this is where the main element of these templates are. I'm talking, of course, about the virtual table. So if we go a bit down below, this is here the most important part, in my opinion, of this whole template, the network table top manager. And as you can see, there is a network table top manager component here that if we double click on it, you can see that this script contains all of the logic to place the different person around the table and to be able to switch seat if we request it. And remember, this is what's possible when you actually interact with one of these four buttons. So a very, very cool system. 
But actually, something that I was super surprised with this project is how they are able to synchronize the table around the player, even if the player is able to move it. And this is actually a really sneaky secret that they are doing, because if we go under here the table system, as you can see, there is the table manipulation offset, which contains both the manipulator for rotating and moving the table. But something really odd to me is that, as you can see, the thing that is responsible to move the table, so the XR grab interactable, is not networked. So this is not a network XR grab interactable. This means that we are moving the table, but it's not sent to the other user. And yeah, when I saw this, this I was like, how are they able to still synchronize the player when we move the table? Because as you saw previously, if we move the table, the other player move as well. So this doesn't make any sense. But then if we go down below, there is here the table manipulator. And if we open the script, this is where we can see a big secret. When we stop interacting with the player, we are actually moving the player. So it means that we are not moving the other player, but we are moving ourselves. So that is super weird to me. And let me show you exactly what I mean by this. So if I press on play here, here you go. I have the table in front of me. And as you can imagine, I can grab it. There you go. And now if I grab it, you can see that there is a preview that follows my hand. But here we go. So if you focus on what I'm seeing on the game view, now if I release here the preview of the table, there you go. It seems like the table has moved, but it's actually not the table that has moved. It is you, right? The table is always at the same position. What they are actually doing is move the player. And this is so smart. I cannot stress it enough because if it was the table that was moving, it means that we need to ask all of the player to move their position in the network as well, which of course takes a lot of resources. And of course means that if everybody is moving the table, this is just a nightmare. But with this simple trick to move the player and not the table when he releases the selection, we are simplifying our game so much. So for me, this is actually the big secret that Unity is doing to make this tabletop MR template works. Very, very a sneaky and smart move by the team. So congrats on them. Now, anyway, at this point, you can have a look at the different tabletop games that are under here. This game object, we have this physics sandbox, the slingshot, and the chess is actually located on a separate scene for loading optimization, of course. And yeah, a really nice thing that you can do is just browse a little bit how the gameplay is synchronized for each one of these games, like it is done for the VR template. And at this point, that's it for me. This is the overview of the MR tabletop template by Unity. Such an amazing project. And I really can't wait to see what the XR developer will build on top of this awesome system. So thanks a lot, Unity. And thanks also to you for watching these tutorials. As always, if you enjoyed this video and want me to make more about it, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. A big shout out also to my Patreon for supporting my work and if like them you want to get access to some exclusive content and the source code of all of my project join us the link is in the description down below now remember that starting tomorrow the promotional code 2025 that gets you half the price for a year vr addict tier on my patreon will be over so this is your last chance if you want to get everything that i will post in 2025 for half the price now thank you for watching and see you very soon. Bye-bye.